Besides the weather, there aren't many things in our lives that result in a shared experience for hundreds of thousands of Western New Yorkers. But this morning's earthquake is an exception. Unless you slept through it or you're in the southern tier, maybe too far away, you likely felt the 3.8 magnitude quake. It happened at precisely 615 this morning, centered in a neighborhood that sits along Buffalo Creek just to the east of the 90 in West Seneca, right by the 400 interchange. It was about two miles under the Earth's surface. And while the epicenter wasn't in that specific spot, it certainly, while the epicenter was there, uh, it caused lots of concern all over the region, stretching from Niagara Falls to the South Towns, also our eastern counties. This is obviously rare, so what to make of it? Patrick Hammer is our chief meteorologist, and he's joining us tonight from our Hamburg Bureau, a.k.a. his backyard, because uh, if you watch Daybreak today, you know that Patrick is from California, knows a thing or two uh, about these types of, of earthquakes. Uh, Patrick, we appreciate you braving the cold here. Um, what did you make as you felt this and help us understand what we're learning tonight about this earthquake? Michael, I got to tell you, it was the strangest thing. Like so many people at home, we were broadcasting on the air and my initial thought was a plane crashed. Something hit the studio. Mm -hmm. um, an explosion across Delaware happened. Uh, Melissa Holmes, uh, we went to commercial break. She goes, was, was that an earthquake? And my initial reaction was, was no. Um, it, that was an explosion. That's not what an earthquake feels like. Um, and then 10 seconds later, I got a text from my daughter <coughs> here in Hamburg, and she said, Dad, did you hear that? Did you feel that? And that's when I knew. Okay, well, I'm in downtown, and she felt it in Hamburg. What else could it be? That had to have been an earthquake. And I got to tell you, it felt different than the kind of earthquakes that I experienced growing up in uh, California. So Patrick, I know, I know you made some um, graphics for us earlier. Um, walk us through that, including, you know, where the epicenter was for this earthquake and then what we know about, you know, the fault line that is here and then some of the history behind all this. Yeah, so, okay, so this earthquake had its epicenter in, as we can show you graphically, in West Seneca and uh, as a 3.8. Now, earthquakes happen along fault lines where Earth's plates either rub against each other or ride up and over each other called either strike slip or, you know, faults or, you know, faults that just kind of slide up against each other. Yeah, we're going we to move to the next have video, a fault Patrick. Go ahead. called the Clarendon Linden Fault System, which uh, runs from Lake Ontario down through Orleans, Genesee, and um, Wyoming into Allegheny counties. And this earthquake was probably associated with that. And we have a historical, um, uh, you know, experience with earthquakes associated with that fault system. In fact, we've plotted where earthquakes have happened associated with that fault system. A lot of those have been in Wyoming County and in Erie County as well. There's a history of them. And some of them have been in the 3.0 to 4.0 or a little bit larger. In fact, we have a list of some of the top four earthquakes that have happened. And I gotta tell you this 3.8 is the largest earthquake we have felt here in 56 years that's a long time you've got to go back to 1923 there was a 4.8 in attica okay and then we have a, a couple of others most notably two that were just above a 4.0 uh in the 1960s okay and then you come to this one uh, which was a 3.8 um so they're infrequent they don't happen very often um Earthquakes tend to roll. Uh, they can last 30 to 40 seconds, maybe up to a minute. This one was like an explosion, likely because it was shallow, only at thir three kilometers down. They often, like the one in Turkey, the Loma Prieta in San Francisco, the Northridge, those happen at 10 to 15 kilometers down. The fact that this was shallow, which is probably why it sounded and felt like a short explosion. 
Needless to say, even though it wasn't really that large in a national perspective, it certainly rattled a lot of nerves. Yeah, and Patrick, I think a lot of people are wondering as we look at that history and the fact that this is the strongest earthquake in Western New York in, in 50 years, um, what to make of that history? I mean, it is, I guess it's just the case, right, that any earthquake can happen anywhere and maybe we shouldn't necessarily be surprised. Yeah, Michael, I, I'm not sure if I, I quite heard you, but th the fact is, yeah, earthquakes happen um, in many areas where uh, plates line up against one another. The Pacific Rim is, is a notable place, but they also can happen in the center part of the country. Missouri is a hotspot. Uh, Elise showed you earlier, there was one in Texas today, um, down in the Carolinas, Virginia. Those are places uh, that have earthquakes. But of course, uh, the devastating news today, of course, is what's been happening overseas in Turkey, where that earthquake is on the magnitude of 10,000 times uh, stronger than the one we felt here today. And the result, of course, is over uh, 3,000 deaths and probably a death toll that's likely to climb. Yeah, we've all talked about how um you know, odd it is to be discussing the fact that we have this very small earthquake happening in Western New York today, nowhere near the damage that we're seeing, you know, overseas um, as, as they're all coping with that. Um, Patrick, uh, before I let you go, um, what are you looking forward to learning as, you know, we hear from more experts in, in terms of, you know, what, what they're able to tell us about this earthquake, what, what caused it and all of that. What are you gonna be following in the, in the coming day or so? What am I going to be following in terms of uh, what's coming next? Is that what you're saying? Not necessarily like if there's going to be another earthquake as a result of this, or some type of aftershock, but what information would you like to, to gather in terms of, or, or is there anything more that we do learn? You know, I'm just thinking as we talk to these experts um, who know all of this stuff so well, what questions do you have that are still unanswered? You know, I, I guess I kind of like to understand... Um, you know, this this fault system, I mean, we are here, you know, in New York State, which is, you know, not known to be, I mean, it's kind of geologically active. Um, we don't have a major fault system that runs through here. I mean, we've got this one that I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm just kind of curious, what caused this one? Was it just like uh, Dr. Bohan mentioned earlier? Was it just happenstance? Was it just kind of a, um, a random act, a random occurrence? I, I got to believe it was. Um, I, I have to believe that it was uh, nature just being mother nature. And uh, I don't know, I just found it fascinating that it happened to occur on a day where we're having a major earthquake at another part of the country, uh, another part of the world. I think it was, a, I believe it was a, a coincidence. You do have a dynamic process where other earthquakes can uh, uh, cause other earthquakes to, uh, to happen. They usually are of a closer proximity, um, but I'd like to see if possibly there was a relationship uh, between the two. That's what I would like to learn. Patrick Hammer joining us uh, from the backyard there. Patrick, we appreciate it. We were hoping to speak with the USGS. Um, unfortunately, we're having problems uh, with that connection, so we can't bring you that interview. But as Patrick mentioned, there are certainly a lot of questions that remain. Um, our coverage will continue on all of this coming up at six o'clock. We will hear from a seismologist and uh, continue to try to understand uh, why this happened this morning and also seeing if there is any damage.